Hello everyone and welcome to another video. I want to show you something that I only discovered recently myself. It's called openhistoricalmap.org and it's based on OpenStreetMap of course and it's used for showing historical things and it had been pointed out by a lot of people in the OpenStreetMap community to me because obviously I do map historical things and sometimes I want to map things that are gone and we're not supposed to put those on OpenStreetMap because it, it wouldn't be really helpful with navigation to put things on the map that aren't there anymore. But Open Historical Map is the place for that. And if you go onto openhistoricalmap.org, you'll see that Ireland is basically a blank canvas, apart from the stuff that I've done in Kilkenny and a few things that have been done in Dublin. And I will show you what I've done in Kilkenny and then we'll go and do a bit of work in Yall. Um, using Wikipedia basically as an open source source and um, because it's very difficult to find all that information online quickly um, openly accessible so this is what what it looks like when there's almost nothing done and when I go over to Kilkenny you see at the bottom here we have a timeline and you can set it to as far back as you want and it ends in the the current year but I've just stopped it in 1980 and I've gone back to 1100 it's kind of randomly chosen it's just before 1200 before the Normans arrived in Kilkenny so I, there are some buildings there and some roads because I don't have a date for them so I left that blank it'll get clearer once um, I go into the mapping so I'll just start the timeline and you can um, hit the play button and it'll just go year by year or the fast forward and it'll go um, every 10 years. So the Normans of course arrived in Kilkenny around 1170. They built the castle here. So you'll see that pop up and then build the high street connecting the castle with the cathedral that isn't there yet, which because I don't really know how big it was. And those buildings weren't there in 1100. I just don't know when they were built. So I'll just run this now and we'll have a look only at English town. And I'll stop it uh, to explain some things. So now we have um, the castle here. It probably looked a bit different. The, the footprint was probably different, but I, I don't know. Um, so I just traced the open street map bit. But it still has this wall here, which is gone by now. And we'll see that later on. And then we have this St. Mary's Chapel. I don't know when it was built and I don't know when it... Uh, was gone it's gone now definitely and St John's Priory up here and then this church I think it's St Stephen's it's gone now so I, I can never remember um so I'll just continue the timeline so the Normans built the high street or the main street connecting the castle oops um and the cathedral and then all these lanes as well to um give access to all the burgage plots and the names could have probably changed over time, and you can also reflect that in on open historical map. And I'll explain how later. You've probably also seen uh, Grace's Castle appear here. That's where the courthouse is nowadays. And the Black Abbey in 1225. Again, I don't really have the footprint. It's only this part is left now. So I had to guess a bit. And there are two bridges here. This, the one on the right is still there. The one on the left is gone, but there's still a stump um, kind of reaching out from this wall here along the River Brega. So up again, I don't know the date for that. We're getting closer to the dissolution of the monasteries. So that's the end of the Black Abbey. And now with the f around 1580, we're beginning to see all these merchant houses appearing on the properties that formerly belonged to the church. So we have the Shee's Arms House in 1582 and also the Archer Mansion in 1582, where the hole in the wall is now. And you've probably also seen the, hopefully, the um, city town walls, sorry, it was only a town back then. The town walls appear around here with the towers. Um, the only date I found was mid-13th century, so I put 1250 there. And it's, the town wall is going to vanish over time. So we have Roth House now by 1610. 
it had its complete, uh, the three houses, for example, and then we also have the She Mansion, just next to Grace's Castle, which is gone by now. And we have the other She Mansion down here, where Paris, Texas is now. And uh, this one here, just next to the water slip, is where, um, I think it's uh, a Langton Mansion, another one of those merchant families. And now Cromwell has hit the town, city, sorry, city. So literally here, this piece of the wall is gone. And now we're coming closer to the time of William Robertson, who was a very prominent architect in Kilkenny, born in Kilkenny, baptized in St. Mary's Church, grew up on High Street and then lived in William Street, which um, is... I might not have mapped it yet. I'm confused now. It's here somewhere. <laughs> and he built a lot of um, houses on William Street. And a lot of houses along here and there. So you see a lot of houses pop up now until 1850. I think that's when he died. Up here you see the railway station. It's now disused beyond this point. So I think it's very, very interesting for railway enthusiasts because you find the information on Wikipedia because there's always, you can always rely on um, railway enthusiasts for, for finding information online, which is great. And I think it's been, open historical map has been used a lot by those railway nerds, no offense. Okay, so so that's that's Kilkenny. Just to give you a little introduction of um, what can be done. And of course, I haven't added all the buildings because that would be a lifelong work, I think, for one person. And it's hard to come by all that information. So now we're going to go to Yall. And the problem with this map is that if you use the open historical map standard view, you're not going to have anything to go by apart from rivers. So unless you know your way around the rivers really well, that's not going to help much. But what you can do on the right hand side is you can choose the standard OpenStreetMap layer. And that makes it much easier to find y'all down here. So and if I switch back to the open historical map layer, you will see there's nothing there. So it's a blank canvas. And I'm just going to get started. And to avoid um, having this video being too long, I'll just add one building in this um, part of the video. And then I'll make another video as a follow up where I'll add the town walls and also some more buildings. And I can add streets, but I haven't a clue when any of the streets in Yall were built. So I can't put any dates on them. But if anyone is an expert in Yall history, you're very welcome to add all that information later on and to make it a better map of Yall. So um, I will choose a building and the building I want to choose for this video is the town hall because that's a pretty good center of town, not literally, but the political center. And I'll just, you have to be logged in. One problem I've had is that every time I'm trying to log in, I have to reset my password. I don't know what's wrong there, but um, yeah, that's a bit of a nuisance, but you can overcome that. So I just click edit just like an open street map at the top left there and and wait for the satellite view to load or whatever is your standard. I would recommend not using the satellite view because it's always tricky to get the outlines of the buildings right. But instead what you can do here, open your layers in the editing mode and choose open street map standard provided of course the buildings are already mapped. So I can zoom in now and find the town hall. It's not the town hall anymore. It's this building here, the Mall Art Center. And um, I'll just start drawing the outline of the building, just following what's already on OpenStreetMap. And then on the left hand side, I will just type town hall and hope that there is a preset. There is. And I can just click on that. And you see now it gives you, it asks you about the start date, end date, the name. So um, we'll just type in town hall and a source. So we can use OSM 
because I've used that for the outline. And then I will go over to Wikipedia and look at the... They have a pretty good list of historical buildings here. So Town Hall, a new hall cell was erected in 1753 by the corporation. So just take that as the start date, copy that and paste it in here. I don't have a month or a date, but that's completely fine. And um, I don't have an end date. I'd say the building is still there, so I won't put an end date in. Because if you put in whenever they um, discontinued the use as a town hall, the whole building will disappear. Um, so we won't do that. And then you can, I don't, the license is probably for copyright reasons. Um, operator, well, you all town council, I guess. It's not really that important. Um, and then type, you can put in town. Again, that's not very important for the historical view. And in city, I'll just type y'all. And what you can do as well is um, down here in the tags, you can add the life cycle tags. So the way you do that is you just use colon um, with the name, for example, use colon and then put 1753 to, and then you have to know when it ceased being the town hall. Is that here somewhere? No. Um, so we can't put that in. So I'll just leave that there and leave the start date. And I knew I had forgotten something, so I, I want to add um, Wikipedia in the source. Wikipedia. So now I can save this. Add it to town hall, source, OSM, and Wikipedia and upload. And then I can go to the main page again by just clicking on the logo. So it's now saved and I've waited a couple of minutes. It helped that the internet went and came back and all that. So I've refreshed and you can't see it now because I've set the timeline to reach from 1700 to 1800 and the year was 17 something. The year was 1753. So I will just start um, and go year by year. Let's start in 1720 because we can't wait forever and go to 1760. And I go year by year and it should appear in 1753. Ta -da! There it is. That's all there is to it. And I'll finish this video here and then I'll start another one adding more of the buildings in you all and also I'll probably start with the town wall and um, because that defines you all in itself in the Middle Ages and continue on from there. And thank you for watching so far. Let me know what you think in the comments or on Facebook on my Facebook page OSM for History Buffs. And of course, I'm always happy about new followers and I'm especially happy if you go and map yourself, of course. So see you in the next video. Bye.